Good morning and a very, very warm welcome to all of you um, to the Square for this Information Day, which has been organised, of course, by EIT. And this is an Information Day on the 2018 call for proposals. My name is Alison Hunter and I am a Brussels-based EU policy analyst and event moderator. And it's a great privilege for me to be taking you through today's agenda and to be with you for the whole day. So a very warm welcome to all of you. We have with our lineup today, quite a packed agenda, as you've probably seen from it, an excellent group of speakers and experts. We have a number of presentations and panel discussions, providing information and insights to take you through the course of the day. So just before we start, a few housekeeping rules and regulations. Today's event, as well as welcoming all of you, will be web streamed. So we also have a virtual audience. Welcome to all of you. And after today, you will have access to the various PowerPoints the questions which have been asked and of course we ask if you will please use the Twitter, engage with Twitter, which we have noted on the bottom here. There are two hashtags. There's hashtag EIT urban and hashtag EIT manufacturing. These of course being the focus of today's discussions. As many of you know from your um, registration process, you were asked if you wanted to add any questions. These questions have already been noted by the EIT team and indeed you will probably find most of them, I hope, being answered over the course of the day through the various presentations and the discussions. These questions are also being uploaded onto the EIT's website, so please keep referring to the website if you have further questions you want to ask after today, you know where to, where to add them. And that then becomes something that's global for, for everyone to access. The other few things I wanted to mention are abbreviations. As we know, most of you are probably familiar with the, the EU speak and the use of abbreviations, which can be rather off-putting. Well, EIT has decided that we're not going to use those, certainly not today, except, of course, for EIT, which everyone is well aware of. But the, the term KIC, Knowledge Innovation Community, we're now changing that to the more global innovation community. So you'll hear much more of that being used today and we're seeking to avoid all other forms of abbreviations. In terms of the timing for today, could I quickly just refer everyone to the agenda so that you have a good sense of what it is that we're seeking to cover. We have to start us with this morning um, a number of more kind of wider um, interventions and, and, and speeches, and we have those um, with Jean-Philippe Gamel and Begonia Arano. These are both from DG Education and Culture. And then Martin Kern will talk us through the EIT's mission priorities and future outlook. Martin Kern, of course, is the EIT Interim Director. We will then move on to a short discussion between myself and Rajai Agabi, who is the founder and chief executive of Elios. And um, Rajai has a very interesting background with the EIT in Inno Energy. So we will um, engage in that discussion and get some insights. And then we're going on to some other further discussions with the EIT team to take a further look into the proposal process and some of the wider issues around engaging with the EIT, some wider insights into there. And we have there some presentations and indeed um, some panel discussions. Just before lunch, we'll have a very short Q&A session with EIT representatives. So another chance there for you to ask questions. Then we have a networking lunch where we very much encourage you to, to pick up again with partners, colleagues, etc. And after lunch, we'll go into our final session from 2.30 to 4 on synergies and complementarities between the EIT community and other policy and funding instruments. So as you can see, a rather packed agenda, 
to take us through the day to day. But before we start, I'm interested to find out who's in the audience with us. So can I have a show of hands, please, for, for those of you who have attended an EIT event before? Quite a lot. I would say probably about half. That's good for us to know, excellent. And also I'm keen to get a sense of which grouping you come from. So we have a sense of the, the balance in the audience. So which, which group do you come from? Whether that's from the research community, the academic community, the industrial community, the public sector, or perhaps another grouping. So first of all, hands, a show of hands please for the research community. Quite a lot, unsurprisingly. The academic community, okay, good. Industrial community, excellent. Wider public sector, good. Anyone I missed? <laughs> a few, okay, excellent. Okay, a very good spread then, which is a great start um, for the day to day. So, without any further ado, I would like to hand over to our first speaker, who is Jean-Philippe Gamel. He is a member of the Cabinet for the Commissioner for Education and Culture. Jean-Philippe, can I please ask you to, to come to the stage? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Commissioner Tibor Navracic, the European Commissioner in charge of education, education, culture, youth and sports, but also in charge of the EIT, I would like to thank you all for being here today. It's very stimulating to see so many people from across Europe, but also a variety of sectors coming together to learn more about the EIT 2018 call for KICS proposals. In 2008, the Commission recognized that it was of the utmost importance to invest in the creation of innovative ecosystems, to deliver economic growth and create the jobs of the future. And as we all know, this led to the creation of the EIT. Ten years on, and thanks to the work of many individuals and organizations, supported by 2.4 billion euros from Horizon 2020, we have come a long way in achieving our goals. I'm proud to say that the EIT has developed into one of Europe's most effective and important instruments in fostering innovation. The EIT was a bold and highly ambitious project, and we are now witnessing real progress. At the very heart of the EIT's success in fostering innovation has been the so-called knowledge triangle where universities, research centers, and businesses collaborate and develop synergies. It is this model, with the support of EU funding, that has brought together more than 1,000 partners across Europe, and six kicks, soon to be eight with the current call. This collaborative approach works because it focuses on two aspects, the innovators and the ecosystem. The EIT has invested in the brightest and best to ensure that leading innovators are able to come to the fore. And the EIT has created an innovation ecosystem with a long-term perspective and hands-on approach that goes beyond the simple funding of projects. We are convinced that this model is the way forward to deliver innovation and economic growth. Taken together, Kicks have found in over 300 startups, two of which have recently secured over 15 million euros in private investments. EIT graduates find jobs more quickly. Startups are created and scaled up at a greater pace, and new products are developed and brought to the market. Details of these achievements will be presented later today's, today. Other programs also bring talents together, but not in this sustained long-term way, not with the same degree of autonomy to shape their work, and not with the same focus on education as the EIT and its kicks. No other comparable European program supports a student's journey from studying to founding an innovative startup. Given the importance of a highly skilled workforce for Europe, Commissioner Navracic 
has put the development of competencies, especially entrepreneurship and innovation, at the very heart of our recently launched education package. With a renewed key competencies framework and digital action plan, we hope to assist the member states and all of you here in bringing on the next generation of innovators and tech leaders. Bearing all this in mind, our aim is to continue this focus on education and developing innovative ecosystems in the future research and innovation framework program, FP9, currently being developed by the Commission. Finally, we must remember that innovation has many dimensions. Innovation for climate change or for healthier aging may bring valuable outcomes, not simply in form of market returns. To thrive and succeed, Europe needs both new competitive successes and new societal solutions to its challenges. Once again, thank you for being here today and best of luck with the applications for the call. Together, we will ensure that the EIT continues to drive innovation, deliver economic growth, and provide the jobs for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Philippe. Um, very interesting and insightful and extremely helpful introduction to the day. I think some of the key words there are, are well understood by all of us. The innovation, the ecosystem, the uniqueness of the system, and of course, bringing on board the next generation of innovators. So with that inspiring start, could, could I please ask Begonia Arano, who is the head of unit for, for innovation and EIT, um, with the DG Ed Education and Culture. Begonia, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here this morning uh, with such a great uh, audience, so balanced, as we were saying earlier on, representing uh, all, basically all communities from what I can see, and also to celebrate in such a way uh, this new EIT call, which is not just any call and not any other Horizon 2020 uh, call. It is always a, an occasion to celebration because we can see that it's the further expansion of the EIT community geographically and thematically. We can say the EIT has now come of age. It's, raised, uh, it's reached uh, cruising speed and now it's widely uh, recognized. And as my uh, colleague uh, Jean-Philippe Gamel has mentioned earlier on, uh, the EIT has developed a unique innovation ecosystem in Europe and we are convinced that this model is the way forward for innovation and growth uh, to thrive. Uh, through its innovation communities, I'm careful not to say KICS, as Alison was uh, saying earlier on, avoid uh, acronyms. The EIT uh, community today brings together more than 1,200 uh, 12, uh, 12, partners across Europe and beyond, and more than 40 offices or co-location uh, centers that work side by side to tackle major societal uh, challenges. And the results are telling. The Commission has recently, as you probably know, the Commission has recently uh, finalized the midterm evaluation of the EIT, and it's showing that the EIT model of innovation is really uh, working. It's not only that the EIT graduates have better jobs, uh, but they also earn more than normal uh, graduates. And very importantly, we see that it has empowered uh, innovators. Later on, we will have the pleasure of uh, listening to Rajai uh, with his uh, model with Eolos, and it's, uh, I think it will be quite uh, of interest for everybody. But uh, we have also other examples of uh, startups that we have supported uh, successfully to raise significant uh, funds. I will give uh, an, the example of uh, uh, Lilium, which uh, is supported by the Climate Kick. I believe there are colleagues from the Climate Kick here, and it raised uh, 90 million euros of equity to really revolutionize private uh, mobility and build uh, completely electric jets that can take off and land vertically. So basically what the EIT is doing is also uh, nurturing the imagination for uh, innovation. And I think that this is something very important that we all have to uh, uh, support. 
In the last uh, three years, the AIT community has also been continuously distinguished in the prestigious uh, Forbes 30 under 30 list, uh, which features the best uh, young uh, innovators and entrepreneurs and game changers uh, from Europe, with a total of, I believe, 31 uh, ventures or people featured. And this, I would say, is a recognition of the EIT's uh, success in identifying the brightest and the most promising young talents and giving them as well the tools to unlock their potential, to turn their ideas into innovation and, of course, benefit the whole society. So there are many reasons to be proud of what uh, we are achieving and uh, very important to continue with this, but I think we also have to look into the challenges that lie ahead. We cannot just, for innovation, we cannot just lie and sleep. We have to always continue. There are other areas that I think that uh, probably today you will continue to discuss where we can be even better and we can further reinforce. I will just give a couple a few examples, four examples, but I'm sure that today, along the day, you will come up with even more uh, ideas. I think it's very important that we uh, contemplate the scaling up of the education activity, reinforcement and uh, uh, scaling up, especially because the kicks have an incredibly strong experience in this, and I think that is the opportunity to bring it uh, even further and uh, to use all the potential that we have there. We have the EIT label, which, why not, should become an EU flagship for entrepreneurial uh, education. I think it's also important that we should uh, reinforce and develop uh, the regional impact through the co-location centers, per perfect opportunity, also through the regional innovation scheme. So that's something that, again, can be further developed as we are now entering this uh, new phase. And very important, of course, this cross uh, experience from the innovation communities, more collaboration amongst them, and then uh, get with this a much higher systemic impact. I think, again, today you will have opportunity to meet also other kicks uh, that, uh, sorry, innovation communities that you will have the opportunity to discuss with. And then, of course, very importantly, uh, I think we need to do more in terms of synergizing with other uh, EU programs and initiatives to make sure that the EIT is widely spread and that we have impact in all uh, areas. So let's not fool ourselves. This will take time and it will take uh, efforts, but I think that the AIT has demonstrated in the last few years, and especially since uh, it became integrated into Horizon 2020, that it is resilient and that it has a strong capacity to evolve and adapt to a changing uh, environment while still remaining very strong in its uh, components, which are amongst the others, investing the human capital aspect of innovation to tackle the societal uh, challenges. So now uh, we are entering, as you well know, the discussions about uh, the shaping of the next uh, framework uh, program for innovation and uh, research, the, what is known now as FP9. And uh, I think that we should all work together in ensuring that these elements are kept crucial and are further emphasized in the, in the future. So without much more delay, I would just uh, like to thank you again for being here, for uh, having so much enthusiasm, so be so open to uh, these collaborations and moving forward this uh, extraordinary uh, model. And I just want to wish all of you, all potential applicants, the best of luck and uh, the future is in your hands. So thank you very much. <laughs>